Okay, welcome everyone and uh, good to have you all uh, back after a long break. I hope uh, the break was refreshing. I hope you had some time to at least uh, go through some of the subjects that you uh, were taught in the last semester. Uh, and I hope you had a good learning experience the last semester and looking forward for uh, uh, a blessed learning experience this semester as well. Um, before we begin, we'll uh, just pause for a word of prayer. Uh, let's just pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the gift of life, God. We thank you for good health and strength. Uh, we thank you for another day when we can experience your goodness, your faithfulness, uh, your grace, your compassion. We can experience your presence, your miraculous works among us, your deeds, God, uh, in our midst. Father, we thank you that, um, that uh, and we worship you, God, because you are king. You alone are God. There is none beside you. There's no one uh, who is greater, who is almighty, who is all powerful than you are, God. And we thank you that even though you are omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, the uh, the sovereign one, the almighty one, yet, God, you choose uh, to relate to us. You choose to, God, speak to us. You choose to fellowship uh, with us. You choose to be our friend, God. And we thank you for such a loving God we have, such a loving Father we have. We thank you, God, that um, uh, we are part of your kingdom, God. And even as we are part of your kingdom, we thank you that we can enjoy all of the privilege and the benefits of being part of your kingdom, of being heirs of your kingdom, of being sons and daughters of your kingdom, God. We thank you for this privilege. And we also thank you for the responsibility that you have given to us, the mandate you've given to us, God, to, to build your kingdom, to extend your kingdom, to make known your kingdom to the furthest parts of this world, that people will enjoy uh, your kingdom reign, your kingdom rule, your kingdom presence, your kingdom domain, God. They can enjoy who all of who you are, enjoy all of what you do, Father, even as they are part of your kingdom. And God, we thank you that we can learn about your kingdom, God. And even as we learn, we pray that um, Whatever we learn will become a reality in our life, will hold a deep significance, uh, a deep meaning in our life, God. And we will operate out of a kingdom a mindset. We will operate out of a kingdom perspective, God. We will operate uh, out of that kingdom mandate and we would always be mindful of uh, who we are, of what we are called to and where we belong to, God. And... Uh, <clears throat> And we would go forth uh, with the power and the authority that you've given to us as heirs of your kingdom, Father God. And we pray that even as we study uh, about your kingdom, about you as king, about your rule and your domain uh, here on earth, we pray that you would uh, give us the insights, the wisdom, the understanding. And God, but we will just flow and move powerfully in what you have called and purposed us to do, Father God. We just bless each and every student in our Bible college, uh, everyone who's attending different classes. We just bless them. Uh, we pray for your grace upon each one of them. We pray for your wisdom upon them. We pray for each and every uh, uh, faculty, God. We pray that even as we teach and we prepare that uh, you will reveal to us uh, deeper truths truths from your word and that we would be able to uh, uh, teach it in a way that uh, students can understand and the ways that they can be enriched and build up in their faith, in their walk uh, uh, with you, Father God. We just commit uh, this entire day, this class into your hands. We bless each and uh, st every student who is joined in today. For those who are not yet joined, we pray that they will be able to join. We pray that you keep all of us in good health and strength uh, so that we we can finish this um, uh, this uh, semester well, God. We pray that. Um 
uh, you would um, give us um, a good uh, internet connectivity so that we will be able to listen uh, without any hindrance. And uh, God, we pray that um, uh, above all that we would be blessed and that uh, our, uh, our walk with you will be edified and enriched and that we will grow closer to knowing you in a deeper and a more profound way, Father. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, for those who joined in while uh, we're praying, uh, welcome. Good to see uh, all of you, Aradhana and uh, jo Georgia, Isaac, uh, Lama, Lubega. Yeah, welcome all of you. And uh, though I can't see your faces, uh, I can just see Siddha Kenu, he's on screen. And uh, for those of you who may know or do not know that uh, Jeffina is here attending in-person classes. So she's right here in front of me. So it's good to have uh, to see one student while you're teaching. It just uh, uh, it just motivates uh, us as, uh, as a teacher. OK, so uh, in this course, we are going to be studying about what are we going to be studying about? I asked the question. <laughs> what are we going to be studying about in this course? The kingdom of God and kingdom building. OK, well, thank you, John Paul. Kingdom of God and kingdom building. So welcome to uh, BC215, uh, the Kingdom of God and Kingdom Builders course. Um, so even as you've joined this course, um, you know, uh, what are you anticipating to learn? Or um, what is in your mind that, OK, this is what I'm going to be learning about um, this is the knowledge I'm going to receive. Uh, are you excited about this course in the first place? Uh, there are some courses that are just listed out and sometimes we think, why should we study about the kingdom of God? Um, and why should we study about kingdom building? Uh, you know, there are many other subjects that we can study about. So what is uh, going through in your minds? Would you like to just share? If there's nothing running in your mind, you can just say there's absolutely nothing. I've just come empty just to receive. That's totally fine. You can unmute your mic. Yeah, um, I just think uh, the kingdom of God, I think uh, Jesus, while he prayed, he said, as it is in heaven, let it happen down here. So <laughs> I think it could be one of that like how we should live like Jesus so that we can be, I mean, not just on heaven, but down here on this earth, we can live like the kingdom of God. And what are the things that we need to do so that we can build his kingdom, the ways that we need to follow? I think it could be that, but I hope. Yes, it's, uh, you're right, Jeffina. It is uh, you know, learning to, um, uh, I mean, as Jesus taught us, uh, spread, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, so that is what we'll be learning about uh, the kingdom of God and how to build God's kingdom here on earth. Yes. Uh, Siddhi Kenneth says, I am I am empty. I came to receive. Okay, that's good. I think Lubega had his hand up. Yes, go ahead, oh, Lubega. Yeah. Yes, uh, man in the beginning was depending on God, but through the advice of Satan, man declared his independence from God. So when we start about the kingdom of God, just as Adam got us from Eden, Jesus Christ came here to take back, to take us back into, into Eden. So I do think that when he was here, Christ and the apostles were preaching about the kingdom of God. And so I think the major reason we are going to study this is to continue preaching the gospel of Christ, telling people not to be independent of God, but to be dependent on God as far as his kingdom is concerned. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Lubega. That was a good theological uh, dimension that you brought about, about how God initiated the kingdom, but how it was lost when Adam and Eve fell. They became uh, slaves. 
of uh, Satan. They handed over uh, the authority and power that God had given to them and how Jesus Christ came to restore um, God's original intent, his purpose, his plan of uh, building his kingdom here on earth. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, when you think about kingdom of God or kingdom builders, what comes to your mind? You can just share some of your thoughts. When you think about kingdom of God and you can think of kingdom building, what what are the thoughts that comes to your mind? It does not does not need to be theological or biblical. You can just share, <laughs> you know. Okay, thank you, Shubhashis. Welcome uh, to class, and uh, thank you for uh, sharing the good news. Yes, as simple as that. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. Okay, thank you, Siddhikenu. Anyone yes. else? The, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God is within us. us. Excellent, thank you. Yes, that's yeah. another theological uh, dimension to the whole thing, aspect of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us, yes. Preaching the gospel, saving souls, and healing the sick. Yes, the kingdom of God is all about uh, preaching the good news, uh, teaching, uh, saving souls, ushering them into the kingdom, uh, bringing about, letting them experience, um, uh, you know, the presence of the king in the kingdom and all that he does. Okay, Paul says it's winning souls to Christ. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Um, I think... Uh, certainly i think of the builders like we all are called to be a builder like to by having christ as our cornerstone and there's also like we should have a solid foundation and we need to have our house in the solid foundation and uh, in the old testament they rebuilt the wall of uh, the wall that fell so i think we all are called to be builders down here on this earth so yeah i just remembered that thank you Thanks. jeffina yes uh uh, we, had, we just don't belong to the kingdom, uh, which is a privilege. And uh, another privilege is the kingdom of God is within us. Uh, but it's also a responsibility. We are called to build the kingdom of God. Like some of you, says, you, know, some of you said that we have to share the good news, uh, preach, teach, uh, baptize, uh, heal the sick, uh, you know, usher people into the kingdom of God. Yes. Thank you. So building the kingdom of God is another aspect of the whole, uh, you know, uh, when we think about the kingdom of God, it's not just the privilege of being there in his kingdom, enjoying his kingdom benefits, having the kingdom of God within us, but also building, yes. Anyone else would like to share? Okay, so in this course, we'll be looking at uh, two APC publications. One is uh, The Kingdom of God. So this is the book, uh, The Kingdom of God. It's available uh, on the APC website. So you can go to www.apcwo.org and you can go to uh, the publications, English books, and you'll find The Kingdom of God and you can... Uh, you know, use that. But I've also put it in, um, you know, uh, shared it with you. You can find it on the, on the page uh, where under course materials. I hope you received that. It's on the stream page, um, course material, which I posted on the 30th of uh, July. I hope you all uh, received that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I receive uh, it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I received it. 
Okay, great. So uh, you can open to the kingdom of God. We'll be looking at the kingdom of God first. Uh, we'll be following that book first. Okay. So how all of you are able to open it, the PDF copy? Yes? Okay, so the Kingdom of God uh, is a major theme throughout uh, the Bible. Okay, and we see that uh, Jesus uh, began his earthly ministry by proclaiming the arrival of uh, the Kingdom of Heaven. He ushered in the Kingdom of Heaven. He proclaimed that the Kingdom of Heaven is here, uh, is at hand. Uh, and we also see that during his last days on the earth here and just before he ascended back into heaven, uh, he continued teaching uh, about the kingdom of God. And we see that uh, the early church continued, the apostles continued to teach about uh, uh, the kingdom of God, whatever they taught, they preached, they, they did it out of a kingdom uh, perspective. Uh, so, um, you know, we too are called to preach the gospel of the kingdom of, uh, of God in all the world before the king comes the second time. Uh, so can somebody please turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, please? Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and can one of you please read that? Anyone like to read Matthew 24, 14? Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the, all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, thank you. So uh, we are called, uh, you know, to preach about the gospel of the kingdom of God, and we uh, we are uh, asked to preach it in uh, the in all the world, and we are also called to fulfill uh, the mandate that uh, Jesus gave us, which Jeffina shared. When Jesus taught us to pray, He taught us, saying, uh, "Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven." So that is a a, a kingdom mandate that we have, and we are all called. Uh, to fulfill the kingdom mandate. Why are we called to fulfill the kingdom mandate? Is because we are part of the kingdom of God. You know, uh, all of you here are believers, and as believers, you you know you are part of the kingdom of God. You're sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, and each one of us, uh, as part of the kingdom of God, are called to fulfill that mandate. And what is that mandate? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means uh, the mandate is that we need to usher in the kingdom of God wherever God has uh, placed us, uh, you know, uh, in whichever field, uh, whichever place, whichever country he's uh, placed us. Each one of us are called uh, to usher in the kingdom of heaven here on uh, earth. And like Zillotor, he said we need to understand we need to know this fact this truth that the kingdom of God is within us yes the kingdom of God is a, is a domain we'll look at it uh, in a little bit uh, where we see God's kingdom presence uh, reign rule activity uh, in uh, on the earth but also the kingdom of God is uh, within us which means we need to recognize that we are sons and daughters of of the kingdom. That is our calling. That is our position. Uh, that is our inheritance. That we are sons and daughters of God. And this, um, you know, this truth is something that we need to uh, come to terms with, or we need to take a hold of, and um, something that we need to keep uh, reiterating in our minds or in our lives that we are sons and daughters of the uh, kingdom. Why is this truth so important? Can anyone uh, throw some light on why is it important for us to know this truth that, you know, that uh, we are sons and daughters of the kingdom?
why is it important for you to know that you are a son or you are a daughter of uh, in the kingdom of god yes lubega i think to, to basically stand right when we are fighting our greatest adversary okay uh, it's important when we are fighting our battles uh, to know uh, a position to know authority uh, to know what god has given to us and where we stand uh, we stand at point of victory we don't stand at the point of defeat uh, we don't have to be traumatized terrorized by our enemy um uh, uh and we know that the battle is already won we just have to claim it in the natural uh, so we uh, fight with that perspective okay why else is it important for us to know that we are sons and daughters of the kingdom uh, i believe knowing that we are sons and daughters of the kingdom uh, helps us to see life in a different perspective like we are different and we are distinct at one like we don't follow the pattern of the world we will be different just like how the israelites were always different from the egyptians when there was darkness in the egyptians there was light in the israelites place so i think that makes us have a, a deep faith in him and that gives a great confidence to face life yes that's so important that you know uh, we see everything from a kingdom perspective you know not just uh, uh, if you are a pastor or you're working in a church even if you're working in a secular uh, job or uh, you're doing some secular studies or uh, you know the place where we are living whatever we are doing we we see our job our careers um our vocations what god has called us to do we we see everything from our king from a kingdom perspective we see marriage from a kingdom perspective we see parenting from a kingdom perspective uh we look at uh, life uh, from a kingdom perspective which is very different from the way the world sees uh, things from the way the world operates from the way the world does things uh you know um, we operate in a totally different uh, aspect from a totally different perspective uh, which is a much higher greater perspective and so it's so important for us to keep in mind uh, who we are uh who is our king which kingdom we belong to um uh, because when we look at everything from a kingdom perspective things have a total different meaning uh, uh, it has total different uh, it has a, uh, a total a transformation the way we see things the way we do things uh, there's hope um uh, there is uh, uh, there's this hope that we have a future reward uh, a better place that we will be in um that uh, all our uh, you know our momentary um uh, difficulties struggles uh, will pass away um and what we are really doing is something which is uh, is uh, has an eternal perspective which is something uh, far greater than what the world is running after or uh, looking into so everything when we see that we are sons and daughters uh, we look at everything from a very kingdom perspective from a kingdom mindset uh, mind, mindset and that really uh, uh, you know um, uh, gives us a, a total a transformation in the way we see and do things the way we do life as well and uh, that can be so enriching and uh, so encouraging and life will be uh you know a, a, a very exciting um, for us okay and so in this study we will be um learning how to operate out of um, uh, the kingdom of god perspective um where everything we do we say we think is uh, an extension of the king's uh, domain or reign or rule uh, Uh, here on this earth and also realizing the fact that you know i'm not just a son and a daughter of uh, god's kingdom to enjoy the privileges and the blessings uh, but i'm here on earth with a specific purpose and then a specific purpose whatever i'm doing you know whether it's cooking or cleaning or whether it's meeting a friend or whether it's uh, working in a secular field or working at church or uh, doing ministry uh, uh, through me god's rule his kingdom uh, is being released in and uh, through me and we'll also learn how to fulfill the kingdom mandate that is on our uh, life uh, and what is the kingdom mandate 
What is the kingdom mandate? Uh, we need to assure in the kingdom of God, no matter where we are placed, that is the mandate. Of the okay. okay. Thank you. The Great Commission. The Great Commission. Okay. Yeah, make disciples. Uh, make disciples. Thank you, Rosalind. The kingdom mandate is uh, basically all of what you said is to see his kingdom come and uh, God's will be done in and through your life uh, right where you are or right where God has uh, placed you. Okay, so that is just a, a small introduction to uh, this course. Uh, we look at chapter one now, so you can turn to chapter one, which is on page number five. Uh, the first chapter, a kingdom planned. Okay, so just like I said in the beginning that the kingdom of God is a major theme uh, um, throughout the Bible. Uh, there are about 150 verses in the New Testament uh, that talks about the kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, there are uh, the same number of verses, 150 verses, also talking about uh, who we are in Christ. So you can see that, uh, you know, the kingdom of God is an important theme, is something uh, very important that we need to study, uh, get a hold of, an understanding, a good perspective of, um, uh, because it's a major theme in uh, the New Testament or in the Bible. So there are 150 verses in the New Testament that talks about uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of uh, heaven. So when you think about the kingdom, uh, what comes to your mind? When you think about the kingdom, what comes to your mind? I mean, you've seen movies about kings, kingdoms, uh, movies, uh, uh, that have um, been produced on different kings and uh, the wars. So when you think about a kingdom, what comes to your mind? Um, I think every kingdom has a king. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they have certain rules. Every kingdom has different rules and patterns. Yeah, that's what I can think. Yes, uh, thank you, Jeffina. Uh, a, a kingdom has to have a king. That's very important. Um, and... Uh, Every each and every kingdom have their own rules, their laws. Siddhikenu says a king and his dynasty, he is ruling over his people with justice. Okay, so the king rules. Uh, what else? Yes, Lubega. I think unlike Afri kingdoms where we have subjects and subordinates. The have the kingdom of heaven has has a king and children and sons and daughters. It it only has that. There are no subjects. There are no people who are going to. I, I think like that. That's what I can say. Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, it's so true. I mean, if you look at earthly kings, uh, you know, we have a king who's almighty, all powerful, who's uh, you know showered or uh, lavished with the best of everything and then we have people who are just the subjects and then we have some of them as the slaves and uh, these subjects and slaves are basically serving the uh, king but if you look at the kingdom of god we have this uh, great almighty all powerful um, God, uh, but he does not treat us as slaves, he does not treat us as his subjects, but he treats us as his sons and daughters. Uh, he treats us as heirs, we are heirs of God and we are co-heirs uh, 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 you know, with Jesus Christ, um, and uh, you know, we are um, given uh, uh, the authority uh, of the King here on earth. You know, um, uh, and we are given His rule, His domain, His uh, His government to be established here. So He's given us His authority and power, which is unlike uh, any of the kings. Uh, uh, you know, would have done before. None of the kings would actually share their 
their uh, kingship or their, uh, you know, the authority with anyone because of the whole uh, fear that, you know, somebody else will take their throne. But the king uh, of uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is not insecure. You know, even though he has given us the free will to choose, um, uh, yet we know that he is sovereign um, and his sovereignty will not be hindered in any way, will not diminish his sovereignty because he's given us uh, the, 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 the gift, the volition to, you know, choose um, uh, to do what we want to uh, do. Um, he's given us the willpower to choose, um, but yet we know that he is sovereign and uh, we know that he's uh you know, uh, he doesn't feel insecure by giving us his authority or his power. So that is such a different uh, perspective and dimension of the kingdom of God, which we belong to compared to the earthly kingdom. So the word kingdom uh, basically uh, means or refers to the king's domain, uh, which is uh, the king's rule, reign, uh, his government, uh, the realm of his uh, kingdom. And um, it uh, refers to uh, uh, the realm of his kingdom uh, or the ge geographical area of where the king uh, rules, where he reigns, where he has his sovereignty, establishes his sovereignty, his rule, and his authority. So it's basically the king's domain, uh, which uh, means um, a domain where the king rules, uh, reigns, has his government. Um, also, it is his realm of influence where he uh, establishes his authority and his um, government. Now, if you look at the New Testament, uh, we see two phrases, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Have you noticed that? Yes, no? Have you noticed uh, the phrases, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven? when you've been reading the Gospels or reading the New Testament? Yes? Okay, so uh, is, the, uh, is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven two different phrases, different terms? If they are different, what is the meaning of kingdom of God and what's the meaning of kingdom of heaven? Um. Yeah, I think it refers to the same past. Okay, you thank you, John. Um, you think both of the phrases are, have the similar meaning? Okay. Um, okay, Silatoli says they are used interchangeably. Yes. Uh, I think they both are different. Okay. Uh, I think heaven is already a built one. It's it's something that's stable, and kingdom of God is like we live in earth and we need to build it. I, so I think they are different. Like we need to build it with God, like a, a heaven down here on this earth, as He said in this way. Okay, that's a good way of thinking. Good thought. Uh, but just like uh, John Paul and Zelotoli said, yes, uh, you know, actually the kingdom of God and the kingdom of uh, heaven uh, mean the same thing. Uh, and they use uh, interchangeably. Uh, so basically, the kingdom of God uh, is referring to whose kingdom it is. So whose kingdom it is? Whose kingdom is it? God's kingdom. Yes, it's God's kingdom. Thank you. And the kingdom of heaven is in reference to where this kingdom is from. So where is the kingdom from? Heaven. Heaven, okay, thank you. So we see that uh, these two phrases um, uh, or terms are used interchangeably. They have the same meaning. Uh, the kingdom of God is referring to whose kingdom it is, that is God's kingdom. And the kingdom of heaven is basically talking where this kingdom is from. It is from, it originates from heaven or it's a spiritual, uh, it has a spiritual dimension. It is a spiritual realm. Okay, so both of them refer to the same thing. Uh, which is the rule, the reign, uh, uh, the realm, the government of God in the hearts and lives of people. So we're not just talking about it's to be something uh, in a geographical area, but we're also uh, saying that the kingdom of God is uh, the rule, the reign, uh, the realm, the government of God in the hearts and lives of people. Uh, 
people okay so let's look at an um, an important verse which we can draw some things out of this verse from matthew chapter 25 verse 34 um actually jesus uh, here in this chapter in matthew chapter 25 he's giving us a picture of um, the end of days and he's talking about the sheep and uh, the goats and he's saying that in the last days in the end days you know the the sheep and the goats will be separated uh, so we'll see uh, what will happen and uh, let's read from Matthew chapter 25 verse 34 so can somebody read that please you can read it from your Bibles or it's there also in the notes in the PDF Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Uh Thank you, Roslyn. So this is a very important verse which we can draw some uh, good insights about the kingdom of God. Um, here it says, you know, these words, inherit kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world now this phrase before the foundation of the world appears 10 times in the new testament uh, it appears only 10 times in the uh, in the, in the new testament and one of the places is uh, is mentioned here in this uh, verse in matthew chapter uh, 25 verse 34 uh, with reference to the kingdom of god uh, which is something that is very important that we need to um, look at okay so here we see that the the kingdom uh, of God is something that, uh, you know, God did not uh, plan in retrospect, but is something that he had in his mind even before the foundations of the world, even before uh, creation, even before time began, uh, from all eternity. Uh, you know, the kingdom of God was in the heart of God, was in the mind of God, was in the, uh, was uh, 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 God's in intent and uh, at a particular time in in history you know we see that he brings about uh, his original plan his intent the purpose of his heart which is to establish uh, the kingdom so the kingdom of god is not something that uh, that god thought you know okay when when abraham came on the scene or when uh, king david came on the scene uh, it's not just something that god said okay let me you know bring about my own kingdom but it's something that he had in his heart in his mind it was the intent the purpose of God from even before the very foundations of the earth, even before time began, uh, before all uh, eternity, even before uh, creation. So one of the reasons uh, why God created the world was to, uh, you know, fulfill his original intent, his purpose. And uh, what was that intent, that purpose? One of that was to have a kingdom, uh, to bring about his kingdom here on um, earth. And so it was it's God's intent, his original plan, um, and which he brings, which he had even before the foundations of the world and which he brought about uh, uh, in history when time began, he initiated uh, his kingdom here on on earth. But we see that uh, this verse, uh, this phrase, sorry, uh, from the foundations of the world uh, actually talks about the purpose that uh, God, the eternal purpose that God had in his mind about his uh, kingdom. Now, just like I said, when we think about the kingdom, uh, we think about the king, uh, we think about subjects, we think about slaves, uh, but we see that it was not God's intent, uh, you know, to have a kingdom here on earth with subjects and slaves, uh, but here we see uh, the phrase that you know uh, come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom of God okay so when God originally uh, uh, planned about um, bringing about uh, the kingdom his kingdom here on earth he his intent was uh, you know to bring about um, the hairs 
you know, uh, sons and daughters who will inherit his kingdom. And he did not think about uh, having a people, he did not create people who would be slaves or subjects to do what he wants them to do. But uh, his original plan, his intent was that his sons and daughters would actually inherit his kingdom and would be heirs of his kingdom. And this is so important for us to know as uh, children who belong to the kingdom of God, as people who are called to be kingdom builders, that, you know, uh, we are not slaves and we don't live with that slave mentality. It's so important because some of some uh, sometimes, you know, we operate out of a, a very slave like uh, perspective, a very uh, meager kind of a mindset, um, a very fallen uh, state. Uh, 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 we operate out of a fallen mindset that, you know, I'm nobody, I can't do this, uh, you know, I'm good for, I'm not good at this, I'm good for nothing, you know, I can't do this, this is not what, uh, you know, I can fulfill, but um, we need to know about, you know, how God thinks about us. It's so important for us to know who we are in Christ, what God thinks about us, what uh, he has called us to, what was his original plan, intent and purpose, and it's important for us to align ourselves uh, to his plan and purpose, his intent, um, uh, because when we do, you know, we uh, we operate out of that perspective. We flow out of that, and then we flow in authority. We flow in in the power of God, and uh, we will uh, see ourselves really, uh, you know, uh, bringing about God's kingdom reign. Uh, his His presence, His rule, will be able to usher it with all authority and power uh, here on earth. So, so important for us to know that we are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God and that we are heirs with God, co-heirs with Christ. Um, that is our calling, that is our position and God has uh, given us uh, his kingdom as an inheritance. Um, and so we need to um, take hold of this and run with this even as we continue uh, running our um, race. So. Um, who is this kingdom prepared for? It's not prepared for anyone, but it says this kingdom is prepared for you, which means all those who are born again, uh, when we are born again, we are ushered into the kingdom of God. We are kingdom citizens. We belong to the uh, kingdom of heaven. Um, and so we see that it was God's original intent. His plan was to have a kingdom uh, uh, and to, uh, you know, to prepare people um, uh, who would inherit his kingdom okay and um, the last phrase we look at is you know that we are heirs we are people who inherit the kingdom of god um, uh, and we're joint heirs in this kingdom which means that god has given us his authority okay we flow here on the earth with god's authority with his power and uh, he's not just a uh, limited uh, uh, you know, given us uh, limited access to uh, authority and power, but he has given us all of his authority. He has given us all of his power, which operates to the to the Holy Spirit who, who is living in us and his power is not uh, limited in us. Uh, you know, um, uh, we see that Jesus, um, uh, when he went out from the wilderness, he, uh, he went in the power of the Spirit, you know, and he was not limited in that power and and when Jesus says we can do greater things than what he is uh, what he has done uh, which also um, uh, testifies the fact that he has given us this authority he has given us uh, this power and that nothing can stop us nothing is limiting us and he's given us all of what we need to build his kingdom here on earth uh, as it is in heaven can we say an amen to that everybody Amen. Uh, just believe uh, who you are, what is your calling, um, and uh, what God has uh, given to us. So, you know, we are called um, to, uh, you know, execute the kingdom of God here on earth. We're called to usher in the kingdom of God and to administer his kingdom here on um, earth. So when we look at... Um, uh, 
when we read the Bible, we read it from this perspective uh, that, you know, God's original intent and plan was to build his kingdom here on earth. And when even when you read Genesis 1, um, you know, uh, look at uh, creation from the original intent of what God had purposed and planned. And what was God's original intent and plan was to bring about his kingdom here on um, earth. And that is what he intended to do. And that is what he did when he, um, uh, you know, he um, created um, uh, the earth. So we don't just look at creation as something, okay, God created everything so beautifully and so perfectly and uh, he put man here. But uh, we look at it as God's original purpose, his intent, which he had even before the foundations of the world. And one of that was to bring about his kingdom that is in heaven here on um, earth. So we look at Genesis 1 with that perspective. Um, so we look at how God introduced his kingdom. We read uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. So can somebody read that, please? Genesis chapter 1, 27 and 28. It's there in your PDF. Genesis yes, chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 28. God blessed them and said to, the, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over every living creature that moves on the ground. Okay. Um, so here we see that, you know, God created a man and woman, okay, and he brings about his original intent, his plan, uh, which is to usher in his kingdom here, and uh, he gives uh, the kingdom that he ushered in when he created this world uh, to mankind, and how do we know that uh, these two words, uh, where it says, subdue and have dominion. Okay, subdue and have uh, dominion. So here we see that God wanted to have a kingdom uh, where his people will reign and rule, uh, where his people will manage um, and execute his uh, government. And uh, uh, even as he created the world, he was unfolding his plan or initiating his plan of, uh, um, of bringing in uh, his kingdom here on earth. So we see that the kingdom of God was in the heart of God from the very beginning. And we see that he initiates it and he brings it about even as he, um, you know, um, uh, uh, he creates the world, okay? Uh, the bell has gone, so we'll take a break here and uh, we'll come back uh, at 10 o'clock after the break, okay? So see you all after the break. Thank you, ma'am.